Let's look at the first task in the 2122 Hire Admin and IT assignment. Now, what we're trying to do first of all is establish which file, and the files are shown down here on the right hand side, which file we're going to have to open up in order to complete this task. So, as we read it, we can see it's talking about course leaders and it's talking about staff. And the clue in this one, I would say, is the second paragraph where it talks about can you create and print a report looking for course leaders of business or admin courses. It then tells you how to present the report. And the second clue that tells me it definitely is a database access report is it talks about at the end of the report, it's looking for a total cost and labelled, and it's also asking for a title and a logo at the top right hand of the page. So looking down our list of files, I can see we do have one database here, and this is the one that we're going to go into to complete the first task. Now, when we open up the database, I can see here there are three tables. I think it's worth your while opening up each table just to get a sense of what's in each one. So let's look at course tutors and see what we have. So it's giving us names of tutors, employment start date. It's telling us whether they're course leaders or not. A tick being yes, they are. Blank means no, they're not. And it's got a salary. And all these things are relating to the first task. The second table relates to courses. So there's a list of courses with the course ID and levels. And I remember that from the question. There's something we have to do from this table as well. The third table is to do with modules. And the modules are the various parts of each of the courses in the second table. The other thing that we can do is if we go to database tools, we could look at relationships, just check, are these tables related and how are they related? You might need it, you might not. In this case, we can see that the tutors, there's our unique um, primary key here, one ID per tutor links to the various courses and the course IDs links to the modules. So the first thing we're going to think about is what information are we going to need in order to um, complete task one? So now we know what's in all the tables of the database. Looking at the first task here, we're thinking, what are we going to do with this information? Well, based on what we've got in the task, we are having to search the database to find specific course leaders based on a number of criteria before we can create and print the report. I can see we need the course leaders, level six or higher, there's going to be some kind of salary increase, so a calculated field here. We've also got looking at, at, at a date after a certain date, and we're looking for tutor name, you know, course taught, and the amount their pay will increase by. So we're going to create a query first of all. Going here, create, we've got query design. We'll see here it's going to bring up the three tables. Well, we know that we need the course tutors because it has all the information we're looking for, and so, do, so, and so does the courses table as well. So here are the two tables that we're going to use to create our query, our search. Let's bring down, first of all, the, the first name, tutor first name and tutor last name, because we definitely need that for the report later on. I always think it's helpful just to run the report, just to make sure Sorry, run the query just to make sure that everything is as it should be. And that is fine. We have the tutors. What next then? Well, let's look for only the course leaders. So I bring down the field course lead. Again, I just run it to check what we're doing here. If it's a tick, it means they are a course leader. So back to the query and under criteria, we just type in yes. That will bring up only the course leaders. Our list is shortening, but there's still more to look at. They have to be responsible for level six courses or higher. Well, in our courses uh, table here, we have got a level. If we look at it first and see, there's levels from five up to eight. We're just looking for six or higher, therefore greater than or equal to six. 
Let's run it to check, and that is fine. What's next then? Well, we're going to leave the salary, the calculated field till the end, but we can look at the date who began working with us after 2014. We do have an employment um, start date here, so let's bring that down. And what we're seeing here, if it's after 2014, it must mean that they've started greater than equal to the 1st of January, so 01 forward slash 01 forward slash 2015. We'll bring everybody from 2015. Let's run that. And that's worked as well. Let's go back. What else? Well, the report is asking for course leaders, which we have, of business or admin courses. So let's now look at the courses. There's a section here under courses, the course name. Let's look and see the various courses that we do have. And we're looking for a course leaders of business or admin courses. The thing here is we have business courses, for example, they're just the words of business. Fashion business, where business is at the end. We've got business with, it, with HR, so business is at the beginning. Admin, there's only one, and that's at the beginning. But the, the fact is there's text after it. So when you're faced with a string of text here, we need to use the wild card, the asterisk, to pull out anything with the word business and anything with the word admin. So back to the design. And we'll see here under criteria, let's start with business. So what we're saying here is do the little asterisk first and then type in the word business. So it will pick up if there's any text before, then the word business, and with another asterisk, any text after. So this should pick up any course with the word business somewhere in the title. And it has. Let's go back. Now we also need to look for administration. You might think, well, we've got the word or down here, so we might as well go down to the next line below and do the same thing again. Asterisk, administration this time, and an asterisk at the end. Now let's run this and see what happens. Well, it has picked up the administration courses, but it's also picked up levels that are less than six and start dates that are before 2015. So something's not quite right here. Let us go back and see, well, what's happened is the first part of the query is picked out everything for business and then it's picked out anything involving administration. If you put administration on the line below, you'd have to go back and again go for, you know, yes, for course leaders, it's greater than equal to six for course levels. It's from the 1st of January. 2015 for it to work. So if I, if I put it in again and then run it, we have the answers we need, but that is perhaps not the most efficient way to do it. So let's just take out everything in the second row here. In fact, let's just start again for our query on the course name. Let's go back and put in business, wild, so with the wild first, so asterisk business. And rather than jump down the line, if I just do space and just type in the word or, and then again, let's do, I've got to be careful, by the way, not to do speech marks, but to do asterisks. You'll get an error if you do that. But let's put in administration like that with all the other queries we've done there. And let's run that. And now we can see that we have indeed got everything we need so far for a report except for we now have to deal with the salary and the difference in salary. So let's have a look at that now. Okay, so we're looking for, they are to get a 5% increase. So this is where we have to do what's known as a calculated field. In the box next to course name, if you're doing a calculated field, you may have to create your own field name. Let's call it increase. I'm just going to simply type in the word increase. I'm going to do it in capital letter just because the other ones are in capital letters. Now we need to decide what field we're going to use in order for us to do this calculation. We have got a field salary, so that's the one we need because they're going to get a 5% increase on their salary. If I just do colon, 
So a setting up for this calculated field. And I have to put the field name in a square bracket. So let's just put here square bracket, type in the word salary like that and close it. All right. And we're going to multiply that to get the, the new salary, the revised salary. We can multiply by 1.05. This is not exactly what we're looking for. I'm just going to text to show it, but let's just run it and let's see what's happened. So what it's done is, it's given us the new salary. But that's not what the question is asking. The question is asking for the difference in salary. That's okay. Let's go back. Back to, and I'm going to widen this here so we can see what's happened here. So we've done the first part of it. We know what their new salary is. If we subtract their existing salary, we're going to get the difference. So just going to the end of this. So after 1.05, let's just do minus, subtract. And again, in the square bracket, let's tell access here that we're, again, we're using the information held in the salary field. Let's run it. And now I can see, yes, it has worked out the difference. Now it's not formatted with pound signs or decimal places. That's a very easy fix. Back to view. If I go somewhere in the, the, the information there, I'm just going to right click, bring up properties, and under format, we can see here that we can actually select currency, decimal places, leave it as auto or choose, but that is how we can format the actual salary. Let's run that. And now finally, we do have everything we need for the report. We've got the tutors, they are the course leaders, and there is the increase that we need for the report. So let's just save that. Yes, we do want to save it. Let's call it something meaningful. Just put an increase here, click on OK. And now we'll see we've got our three tables and we've got the query that we can now do for the report, which I'll show you in the next video.